Let's do a video about tobacco, um, cigarettes in particular, and the subject of rolling your own. Okay, so, we'll talk about, this is what I used to buy all of the time. Um, that was my preferred cigarette of choice, because it tastes like chocolate mint, and it's delicious. It's still what I buy when I run out of my supplies to roll my own. Um, there are various reasons to roll your own, and that is the topic of this discussion. Okay, so I started out by actually rolling my own with rolling papers, um, which is pretty convenient. You learn how to roll with rolling papers uh, pretty quickly. It's pretty easy to do. You just take some tobacco, spread it in the paper, roll it up in your fingers, and you have a cigarette. The reason that I got away from that was because it doesn't have a filter. Okay, I know smoking is bad for you, no matter how you do it, but we're going to talk about why this might be a better option than buying these. Um, and I do still like these. They're my go-to cigarettes when I'm not smoking my own rolled ones. Okay, so the price. Let's start there. The price for these. For this one pack for 20 cigarettes, it costs, down here in Georgia, almost $6. Okay, sometimes you can find them in the dollar off packs, but if you are a pack a day smoker, you have to multiply that number by 30 to figure out you know how much you're smoking in a month so let's say it's five dollars for a pack of cigarettes which is pretty cheap um, especially down here in Georgia if you smoke one pack a day which is pretty easy to do it can get out of hand pretty quick um, especially if you're out in your shop working on stuff you know and you're not monitoring your usage you're gonna be spending approximately hundred fifty dollars a month okay um, so for that same price of this one pack of cigarettes I can or two dollars more a pack of extra premium cigarettes, we'll say, I can get a full carton's worth of tobacco um, and rolling papers, 200 rolling papers, for that same price. Uh, the issue, the reason that I started rolling with the rolling papers first was that the startup cost initially is a bit high, especially if, you know, you're smoking and it's depleting your resources in your, in your bank account specifically. Um, to buy one of these machines it might be breaking the bank. So this machine cost me about $50 at a local tobacconist. Um, that's, that's another reason. Buy local instead of supporting a big corporation. Um, you know, you're going to see that money back, especially if you're a local business owner. Um, you know, that person is going to immediately go out and spend that money in your neighborhood who may or may not, he may even come into your store or your shop or your business and, and give that money right back to you. It's good with a social network with people around, um, and you know that you're going to get your money back. You're going to have a local economy instead of a global economy. Um, and they do, Marlboro does Im import all over the globe. I've seen them in, in the UK and other countries and Spain and stuff uh, in my travels in the military. <clears throat> uh, okay, so yeah, support local. The price we talked about, uh, this is $50, which might be breaking the bank. Save up your pennies. It's worth it. Um, you know, it pays itself off after the first time you used it <clears throat> because, again, we talked about in one month's time you're going to be spending $150 this way. Uh, this way it's only $50. So save, save up your, your money, put away $5 a week, and get a machine. Um, the other thing, so let's talk about what's inside. And I'm going to cut up this cigarette, and I won't waste it. You know, I'm not a wasteful guy. I'm going to throw it in here and smoke it anyways because I normally would. Um, <clears throat> these are fantastic cigarettes. I like them. I uh, don't necessarily trust them. They taste good. They give you nicotine. They work like cigarettes. That's what I mean by I, I like them. Um, I've been smoking these for years, and I should probably stop smoking altogether, but I enjoy it. Um, it's very relaxing. Okay, so that's me. That's my opinion. Um, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably have a similar opinion um, or are an addict to nicotine. And that's another reason we'll get into. So we're going to talk about what's inside of them. Um, you can buy the tubes, and this is how they come. They're empty tubes, okay? Uh, the filter in there is another thing. Okay, so there's, there's a good point about buying, uh, making your own cigarettes. Uh, most tobacco companies that make cigarettes today have a fiberglass filter. Um, you might think, you know, we come in contact with fiberglass every day, it's not really a harsh product, but you have to think about when they make these, they stuff it, um, and they might have a little bit extra overhang, and they got to clip it. <clears throat> a 
Okay, so you're going to have fiberglass dust, a little bit at least on the end of every cigarette, that's going to be going into your lungs. Okay, and it's going to be a similar effect over a long term as asbestos. So that's why I'm trying to get away from fiberglass. I did ask the last time that I was in <clears throat> the tobacconist because I thought about it, what these filters are made out of, and I'm pretty sure, let me look at it myself, pretty sure these are fiberglass. They're shiny. How you can tell is that it look, it'll look shiny. Um, I think Camel uses uh, cotton. Cotton is what I'm looking for. But the point of this is that um, I can get cigarette tubes that have cotton, which isn't going to cut up and tear up my lungs. Um, it's an organic product. I guess so is glass. It comes from sand. But um, it's not going to cut up my lungs and, and give me issues that way on top of the tar and, and carcinogens that are in the smoke. Um, these tubes do come pre-mentholated. You can buy mentholated tubes, which is fantastic. I love menthol. I love the, the minty menthol taste. That's why I go with these. Um, these do have a darker flavor and how you would control that. Um, to make them taste like mint chocolate is you get menthol, you get mint, um, and maybe, I don't know how you would add to, uh, a chocolatey flavor. I've been searching for years to get the same effect at a cheaper price, and so far this is the only one. So it is kind of a drawback for me, um, because I'm smoking for enjoyment and pleasure, to go away from these, but it is much cheaper. Um, so let me cut open this cigarette that is a Marlboro Smooth just so you guys see it. If I, I'm not going to be able to get a focus on it. There you go. All real smooth. I'm going to cut this open and show you guys um, what this stuff is and talk about that. Okay, so just for the sake of, you know, scientific me not lying to you, and I can pull out my Eagle Scout card, you know, if you don't believe me, just leave in the comments. I want to see your Eagle Scout card and I'll make a video don't, proving my Eagle Scoutness and that a, uh, you know, a Scout is trustworthy. <coughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So this is the same cigarette, okay, there's the tobacco that came out, I cut it open with this knife. Um, so this is the material that's inside. Let's see if we can spread it out enough to show you guys what I'm talking about. You can see it's very consistent, very even um, cuttings of material. This is tobacco, allegedly. This is the part that I'm talking about and why these cigarettes might possibly be more dangerous. So you can see the edges on them are very squared off. Um, very squared off. We have different colors in there so it definitely looks like tobacco. But I'm going to tell you it is not. It looks like brown paper that went through a paper shredder and that is because folks that's what it is. It's paper. You are no longer smoking tobacco these days. You are smoking paper. Why do they do this? Okay, um, and I found this as a shock when I learned about it. <clears throat> Why do they grind up paper and put stuff on it and give it to you? Okay, now, some people might say that, um, you know, they're out to get you, they're out to, you know, get you addicted and control chemicals so that you buy more cigarettes. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, I don't know. But the reason that they have gone to this method is that they can control the quality, they can control the burn. Um, uh, the biggest part is controlling the burn. So there was a big issue back when I was a kid that I remember on TV about cigarettes falling out of people's hands when they fall asleep. One, if you're tired, uh, don't be inside your house smoking a cigarette, sitting on your couch or whatever, um, you know, that's lit, that could fall out of your fingers and burn your house down. That's not a good idea. You shouldn't do that thing. Um, so that's why they went to this. So they, they get a big sheet of paper, and then they spray it. They juice up the tobacco. They juice it, okay? So you get all of the stuff that's in tobacco that you get out of a tobacco plant. And then they spray that on the paper. But also, to prevent the flaming of houses, um, they have to make cigarettes in a safety um with safety considerations, I guess, to a specification that uh, an, a, a lit cigarette, if you're not puffing on it, has to go out on its own um, so that there isn't a fire risk in a house. So the way that they do that is they spray it with flame retardants. So not only are you smoking paper, which is worse than smoking a plant, um, I think the paper, there's a lot of chemicals 
used in production of paper. Um, there is also the chemicals that are in the flame retardant that you have to, you know, you're, you're smoking those too when you smoke this stuff. Um, another chemical that's going to be in there, because they like to control the freshness so that they don't have wastage, um, and they've been doing this in, in the UK with beer for a long time. If you ever go uh, in Europe, if you go across the seas and you drink a beer, uh, you'll notice it kind of tastes a little weird. That's because they put formaldehyde in it so that it has a longer shelf life. Um, so they put formaldehyde on this as well. So you are smoking flame retardant, formaldehyde, tobacco juice with uh, questionable amounts of nicotine in it, which can absolutely be controlled by the company. I don't know if they are. I'm just saying that is a possibility. They could be controlling that. They could be putting things in here to make you more addictive. You don't know. They're controlling what they put in this, and you don't know. Uh, we do know that smoked uh, meats uh, from, from hardwoods and stuff, which trees are made out of wood, is a carcinogen in itself. Um, so this is what I use. It's, uh, I'm not doing any product placement. This is just, you know, what's cheap and available and is menthol at my tobacconist. So they call it pipe tobacco. Um, it's a little cheaper than buying cigarette tobacco and it burns effectively the same way. The only real difference is, uh, the moisture content. Okay. Uh, you're not going to want to smite, smoke like your good pipe tobacco. And I got some of that over here that I use in my little bush pipe that I made. Um, these work pretty good. It's a good cheap alternative to buying one and I think it works a little longer and tastes better and you know where it came from. I'll, I'll make a video on those. Well this is the tobacco that I smoke in my actual pipe. It's about, you can see, about the same consistency. This is a little leafier, um, a little more aromatic, um, more, a little more expensive. This is four dollars for this much. Um, I do enjoy smoking a pipe. I don't do it too much. But it is enjoyable. You don't have to pay like eight dollars for a cigar. You don't have to waste an entire cigar smoking, you know, for like five minutes. Um, so that, that's a whole other topic. Maybe I'll get into that, making bush pipes and, and smoking pipes. Okay, so this is the stuff. We'll do the same thing. I'll push this aside so that we don't have any, I guess, contamination. Even though I'm going to mix it. So this is the stuff that I buy. And you can see, if we can get a good focus, that it looks much leafier. It's uneven. Okay, it does look like it went through a shredder, and that's the most convenient way for them to shred it. Um, it is all different colors, much like this stuff. But you will find in here bigger, leafier bits, and if you look at them, you can see the veins of the leaf, and that's how you know the difference. Um, the clear indicator is that it actually looks like a leaf. Sometimes you'll have stems in here. Um, you know, if you get a big, a big chunk of stem, you can just pick it out and throw it aside while you're doing it. So you have your own little quality control. Um, so we know that this is a actual plant that grew out of the ground. Um, Jesus, I guess, or whatever you believe in, Mother Nature, whatever your your thing is, controls what chemicals are in it. Um, the plant controls what chemical is inside of itself and not a company, a corporation. You are going to have the drawback of, you know, if you're inside your house and you drop this, it may not go out. I find that they do go out if you're not smoking them, um, you know, but if you pack it real lightly, they could burn for a significant while and light, light up your house. So don't smoke inside your house, smoke outside in a, in a fire safe area. Um, you shouldn't be smoking in your house anyway, it gets into your stuff and, you know, secondhand with kids and stuff. So I smoke out in my shop, it, my shop is an industrial environment, I don't have kids here and I don't have furniture that the smoke smell gets into. So yeah, it's definitely a plant. It's very planty. You can tell it's a leaf that's been shredded instead of paper, um, which I appreciate. I appreciate paper instead of, or uh, the plant leaf instead of wood shavings. I don't want to be smoking sawdust. I don't think it's necessarily good for you. Um, so the machine, let's talk about that and how that works. You can have your empty tubes on standby here. So this is about how much tobacco is in one cigarette, as we can see. So you take that. Put it on top of your machine. It's a fairly simple process. And then uh, lightly pack it into the slot. Because I, I didn't, I'm showing you guys this because I didn't know how to do it. 
I had to have the person explain it to me. I had a little plastic hand slider. It's a gambler one. Um, I wasn't too impressed with it. I didn't really know how to use it. I would pack the crap out of them. If you pack the crap out of them, uh, know that the machine packs it for you as it's stuffing the tube so that it can get it in. All right. Um, so if you overpack it, it's going to be like, it's barely going to smoke. You're going to have to drag on it extra hard. Um, and that's not necessarily good for your lungs to be doing that all the time. So yeah, a nice light packing in there. And if it's extra, you know, you're going to put it in the next one. It doesn't really matter. So you take your, your tube and slide it onto the thing. So, and then you hold this down so that it's nice and firm and then pull the lever. Uh, this particular machine, which is a Micromatic? Micromatic? Micromatic. Pretty good. Pretty good machine. I'm pretty happy with it. It's all metal construction. Um, I'm not worried about it breaking. That was one thing I was worried about with the, uh, the plastic ones. They did, they're only like $10, but they do wear out. Um, they're more portable, but I generally just smoke in my shop when I'm working. So, yeah, you put your tube on, uh, filter in this way. This little guy, as you're, as you're moving the handle, latches on to the tube and holds it on there. And then a spoon um, that has barbed edges, kind of. It's not very not sharp barb edges, but it grabs the tobacco and shoots it into the tube. And then because it's barbed, when it slides back out, it slides out nice and easy. Uh, you do want to do this in like one solid fluid motion, or you could have the tube pop off. You'll have like a halfway loaded tube, um, and then it's it's garbage unless you want to sit there and twist it out. So I'm not going to show you guys how to do that, but yeah, you just make sure that's back. Load up your your tray. You can see this little thing that comes past. It packs it into a tube shape, and then push the the next part of it, the slider spoon pushes it in there and then you have a cigarette. So I'm gonna pause and then, you know, show you guys that. So that was like one second, not even. Um, and so your cigarette gets loaded, pops off the end here. I'll show you guys the spoon. This is the spoon that I'm talking about. You can see the barbed edges. They uh, only work in one direction. They only push in one direction and they slide backwards. And then the door opens up. You can load it back up again. Um, you can make a lot of these in a very short amount of time. Keep your fingers clear. It says it um, on, the, on the thing at first. And follow the instructions. There are safety precautions in the instructions. I'm not going to be your safety guy for this one. Especially since we're talking about killing yourself slowly. Uh, so yeah, this one cigarette cost me, I think I worked it out to be a couple cents. Like less than five cents. Um, so if you think about like 20 of those, it's not... It's not very expensive at all. Way cheaper than this route. And you can control the quality of it. You know what is in it. You know that you put a leaf in there from a real plant. Um, you can contact the company and see how they grow their tobacco, what their processes are. If you can go organic, you can grow your own tobacco and load it. Um, I haven't grown any tobacco. Maybe I should. Um, but yeah, you can. if you can find an organic tobacco grower... There you go. Get some organic shredded tobacco to have it sent to your house uh, if you don't want to grow your own. And then load your own cigarette tubes. You know it's not going to be full of any harsh chemicals besides you know smoking and the carcinogens and that. You can control the filter. We talked about uh, cotton versus fiberglass. Those two different things. Um, and you can control all kinds of things like the pack. If you like a lightly packed cigarette that burns quickly, you can you know not load it as much. If you like one that burns uh, extra slow and lasts a long time, you can do that. You can regulate your consumption and the price. The price is the other thing. It's a huge difference in price. So there are the benefits of rolling your own cigarettes. So those are the benefits of rolling your own, uh, doing your own your own tobacco production. Um, I hope you guys found this informative. I hope you don't hate me for smoking. Uh, you know, definitely not a topic for kids and those under under the age of 18. Um, but maybe maybe we can uh, kind of take back our country a little bit by doing stuff like this. Uh, the other thing, too, I guess the tax on this is much lower than this. They're not regulating pipe tobacco as much as cigarette tobacco. So that's good. I feel like 
we own these things and that they should not be taxing them that high. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it enjoyable, at least. If you are a smoker, if you're not, you know, don't start. It's not good for you. It's hard to get off of. Um, have an outstanding day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.